Hello everyone, it's Donna Don here. Um, going to make a short video showing a little bit of my CNC router running. It's going to be pretty loud, but I'll try and uh, cover up the uh, microphone when I get up to it. It's getting ready to run its last pass for the depth of cut on the whole unit. So let me get up there and you guys can watch this last pass. There is some chatter when the bit goes into the 90 degree tight corners. So here we go. Okay, this is the last pass. This is a ramp-in procedure that ramps it into 35,000 feet. That's an 8 millimeter bit running about 80 inches a minute, doing a half cut of about 2 millimeters, 4 millimeters. Alright, I've got the uh, my batteries getting real low on this, so I'm going to go ahead and end this, and when it's done, I'll uh, start the video back up. See you in a minute. Alright, everybody, I'm back. Uh, got sidetracked. The neighbor came over. He's having a problem with his uh, washing machine. Uh, said he had a leak, so we're, I was over there for about 20 minutes trying to figure out, help him figure out. Uh, so, anyway, um, this is uh, basically what I've been working on cutting out is this platform that you've all seen. And the way this goes again is these are the feet motor mounts. One goes there, one goes there. So I've got it cut to depth. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. Oh, um, also you'll notice extra set of holes here and here. So I've changed the design again. So now this plate is going to come around here about an inch and a half on each side like so. And these are the original motor mounts, the engine block motor mounts. Uh, these holes are only drilled to a 5 16th. Uh, they'll go out to 10 millimeter, which is a little over 3 eighths of an inch, almost 400,000. So these got to be upsized. I'll drill them out on a drill press. But anyway, uh, those are going to be mounts that block, bolt to the block. And then you've got all these little bolt holes that bolt this block to the engine block. So then you got your two motor mounts to be bolted this. So let me show you what I got. All right, that's it. That, believe it or not, is probably over two hours worth of machining. I figure that's only an eight millimeter end mill, three fluid aluminum end mill carbide, and it's cutting a depth of about 35, 37 thousandths per step is all I'm doing, and I'm cutting at 80 inches a minute, and it does a 50 percent overlap is all. So you're only cutting about Two millimeters or four millimeters because it's an eight millimeter end mill. So each pass is taken off roughly just under forty thousandths on the air. Uh, yeah, forty eight, four four times twenty, sixteen hundred sixty thousand a time. So uh, so it takes many many passes. You can see all the little lines that you've seen on that video. It comes in and starts in the middle and works its way out until it gets all the way to the outer edge. So it's I'm going to come in and do this is a pocket cut. I'm going to come in and do a profile cut where the end mill will come in. I've left 25 thousandths. I thought it was 10, but there's 25 thousandths extra material on this original drawing. But because I'm not cutting out material on the outside to make this a thin rail, this whole thing is going to end up three quarters inch thick all the way around now. So I can actually take this in almost another hundred thousandths of an inch. 
So I can do that with profile cuts. I can go in and do multiple profile cuts and just incrementally keep going out. Or I can just step the drawing out, offset this by 100 down and go in and, and recut it. So now you can see these are 5 16 inch holes. They will be countersunk to accept screws like this. This is only quarter inch, you know, like fine. But those are going to go in there, be flush, three of them, five sixteenths. Again, this is only quarter. And then those will go into the bottom of this. So once this is cut and done, I'll put this on, on the bottom, come through and mark them or drill them, clamp it, and pre drill, start pre drilling, and finish drilling them out on the lathe or something on the drill press. But these three bigger holes are already at five sixteenths and they'll, they'll bolt into these. So this bolts onto the underside of this plate. I thought I was going to have to take this plate and flip it over because I was going to machine this ledge around here down so it was only 8 inch, 3 16 inch thick. But everything up here had to stay 3 quarters to give me some strength for this. But now that I'm adding these ears on, this is all going to stay, the whole thing's going to stay just like this. So once I finish trimming this out, all I'm going to do is come in here and then do a profile cut around the outside. Doing a profile cut, you're, you're doing a full width of cut with the bit, and you got to go slower, but it'll take less passes because you're not doing these 50 passes in here. Uh, it'll still be a while, and you'll get into a lot more chattering. So hopefully, that little video at the start, <coughs> I took a rag and held it over the microphone to see if it'll quiet down because uh, it, it does get pretty loud. But yeah, I've got plenty of room. I mean, I can literally come in damn near quarter of an inch. <clears throat> and the only reason to do that is just to save weight. So, and then when the bolts for the block come, these bolt through, the engine sits here. This is basically the oil sump now. And then there'll be a drain in it that runs out to the external tank. But uh, I'm going to pre, I'm going to drill these, counterbore these holes on the bottom about halfway through and I'll use socket head cap screws, Allen wrench cap screws. So they'll come in and they'll be uh, below the surface of this. So that'll um, I'll go in with an end mill or something and bore them out to fit the heads of them screws. And then again, this one is going to be underneath, underneath this. So that hole I'm going to have to transfer all the way up through this part and machine down and make a flat spot. So, you, or yeah, it's a uh, needs a no, it just needs a hole. Yeah, the bolt to the pan, it'll be uh, yeah, it's got the head's got to go through this way. The bolts because I'm upside down, so the bolt's got to go down through this way. So I'll have to machine a, a shoulder in there, and then the hole it'll be big enough so the bolt will pass through this and set on this plate uh, on the bottom side, of course. Uh, it, it may it may be something like this too. I don't know, um, but either way, I, I don't have to be bored through for this one and then that one. So I got to put a hole on that side and a hole on this side for this one. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, so now I'm just gonna come out uh, and cut this out bigger, just physically wider. It's at the depth I want. It's at five eighths inch deep. So this is eighth of an inch thick here in the center, and then the rest of it's all staying three quarters. So I can leave it right in this jig. I had these uh, sheet metals, these screws for uh, metal roofing. They were just the right length that I was able to put them in there. So I'll, I'll put a bunch of them back in there when I'm doing this outside profile cut. Uh, I'll take these clamps off. I won't need, but you can do a pocket command where you can just physically cut all this all this material away, but it'll take longer than it did to do this. So it's faster to do a profile. I'll just cut the profile, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch out. So, because it's going to want to chatter in all different places, it's going to make a nasty finish. And after it's cut, this whole outer piece will come right off, and this will still be bolted to the table through this piece of plywood, three-quarter inch plywood. So I can bolt down through there. These heads of these bolts will, screws will not be in the way of you know cutting out here. But this is going to be profiled out around here, and that's going to be this is going to carry the strength of these mounts and all these. What you got? One, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 uh, 6 millimeter bolts that will hold it to the block. And then you got these here just to hold the block to this plate. 
and then and then these two big boys here will carry the brunt of the load. So that'll that thing's not going to go anywhere. All right, I think that's going to do her. Uh, I'm probably not going to see anything more till the weekend. So I'll get these two videos spliced together and get them up tonight. So I thought some people might be interested and in see how my my homemade CNC machine works. I mean, it does it does nice. I mean, look at that finish, and that's not even the finished pass yet. So it's really nice. So I'm just going to cut out some more, maybe another eighth of an inch material because it was meant to be inside because I was going to cut the outside back to where it was only this thick on the outside. But, and then the, the side wall would only be eight to three sixteenths inch thick all the way around here. So that's why this was physically smaller. So I can now take it out to here because this is staying three quarter inch the whole way. I'm just going to need longer screws to fold it together. So, all right, I'm going to cut her off there. I just wanted to figure I'd put a little bit of video in there. Hopefully it isn't too loud. So uh, I had a towel that I used to cover the microphone. Hopefully it uh, turns down. You know, the microphone's on the side, on the right side over here. I just held the towel over. So hopefully it didn't. It's loud without, even without the chatter, it's loud. So, uh, but it does a nice job. It's very consistent. I mean, look at those machine marks. And they're very, you can just barely feel just a hair little lip there where the cutter bit is probably angled just a hair. It's probably not square. I have to recheck. It's been a while or a table or something sag. But either way it's close enough for this. It's not a critical dimension. So alright everyone I hope uh, if you're wondering I use uh Mach 3. I did buy the license so it's licensed to me. It's got my name right there. Uh, I can't remember what it cost but it wasn't much. It probably cost a lot more now. So I can take this out. I draw everything up on my computer laptop in the house and here you can close the g-code is that line there so it's gone so now all you got to do is close that and session and then it'll ask to save the fixture the fixture will remember this location zero 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 is right here in the center bottom between these holes half inch up in so it's a, this line right here is a zero reference line for the y axis x axis is right dead smack in the middle of this plate left and right and then Z axis is zero on top, minus three quarter on the bottom. So this whole time I'm cutting this pocket, I'm going from zero. I'd cut like a quarter inch, make sure everything was fine. And I'd reset the program and I'd reset the tool height to the top of the dish. And then it would cut another quarter inch below that until I got to the 625,000 feet. All right, folks, I'm going to cut her off here and... Uh, as always, appreciate everyone taking time to watch these videos and hope this one's uh, informative to you and kind of give you a better insight of what's going on with this plate. Most people probably don't have a clue what I'm talking about. So, all right, everyone, I'm going to do it. And uh, you guys have a good night. And I will probably not see you again till next Sunday. So, all right, everybody, this is Down or Down Out.